All right, hello guys. Today we're going to be talking about Tropical Storm Nestor, and this is going to eventually become post-Tropical Storm Nestor, and at that point it will feel a lot like a nor'easter as it heads up the southeast coast. The Gulf, the Gulf states are all going to feel an effect, and also it's going to head into the northeast and bring a lot of effects to the areas that just had our major nor'easter. So before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's look at your current warnings, watches, and advisories. We have a tropical storm warning up for a lot of the areas offshore of Louisiana and a little bit of areas onshore there in very, very far eastern Louisiana. And then a lot of the coasts for Alabama and also the panhandle of Florida there. That's where we're going to be feeling tropical storm-like effects for the most part for these areas. Let's go ahead and look at your simulated radar here. And we're going to go hour by hour. This is 5 p.m. Uh, today. So this is coming up and you can see we're going to start to see we're probably already seeing some showers, some light showers uh, approach the panhandle of Florida. But by the time we're at 5 p.m., a lot of those yellows are going to be coming in pretty close to Florida and Alabama as well. So we're going to start to get moderate rain and then eventually heavy rain. So it's just going to be picking up in intensity as we go along. Also, scattered thunderstorms are going to be you know, possible throughout Florida for the next few days because of this system. So be on the lookout for that. More scattered thunderstorms than typical. I know you guys get thunderstorms a lot, so you're probably like, well, it's not that big of a deal, but there will be quite a few thunderstorms in the Florida area. Now, let's move on to 12 a.m. tonight, and you can see there is, again, thunderstorms throughout the state of Florida, Daytona, Orlando, Tampa, Palm Bay. Basically, the two northern thirds of the state are, for the most part, getting thunderstorms, and even the southern third is most likely going to start to receive thunderstorms eventually, but we see a lot of oranges moving on shore there for the Panhandle near Pensacola and East Point, so... That's going to be when we're starting to get that even heavier rain. I'm going to go over our winds in a little bit, by the way. I know people are probably wondering because that's kind of the more intense thing that's going to be going on. But we will talk about that in a little bit. And by the time we're at 8 a.m. tomorrow, you can see the low pressure system is located somewhere on the panhandle of Florida. And we see a lot of those heavier showers scattered throughout Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Again, the heavier areas indicated by the yellows and oranges, but it's not too important to pay attention to the exact location with a future forecast like this, especially when they're just all over the place. So we can just be pretty confident that there's going to be scattered, heavy, moderate to heavy showers throughout the states of Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina by time. It's morning time tomorrow, and a lot of those thunderstorms moving on shore to the west coast of Florida near Tampa. I also wanted to mention that. 2 p.m. tomorrow, you can see scattered thunderstorms throughout Florida once again, but really we're seeing a lot of that heavier precipitation throughout Georgia, South Carolina, and now North Carolina and Tennessee getting involved too, and Alabama still involved there in the northern portions by this point. But really, from Savannah up through Atlanta, uh, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Charlotte, all these areas are receiving very heavy rainfall by this point and will have seen hours and hours of moderate to heavy rainfall. So this is a pretty decent rain event, to say the least. It's going to be a major rain event, and we're going to bring a lot of rain to a lot of these areas that have been relatively dry over the last few months. Now, by 8 p.m. tomorrow, you can see that we do have very heavy showers approaching even Virginia by this point and West Virginia. So Roanoke, Lynchburg, Areas like that are receiving heavier uh, rain by this point. Raleigh as well. Uh, Moorhead City about to get some and Beaufort as well, obviously. But South Carolina is getting the brunt of it by this point. It's just to the north of Savannah, those heavier areas of precipitation. It's just past those areas. And probably by this point, Florida is only receiving some showers, if that, by this point. So we should be pretty much done with this for the Gulf Coast, at least for the most part, by 8 p.m. tomorrow. Now, by 3 a.m. tomorrow night, you can see North Carolina and Virginia are now getting the brunt of the precipitation, really a lot from Charlotte up through Raleigh and then back down into the southern coast of North Carolina. We have this kind of hook shape of very heavy precipitation indicated by those oranges and reds. That's where it's going to be, again, very heavy precipitation. And in your yellows and dark red or dark greens, we're going to be receiving moderate rainfall for the most part. So Virginia Beach, Roanoke, Raleigh. Uh, Winchester, up into Pittsburgh, a lot of those areas in western Maryland and eastern West Virginia as well. All these areas are going to be receiving moderate rainfall to heavy rainfall at times. And by the time we're at 8 a.m. on the 20th, so that's going to be, what day is that going to be, Monday? 
Uh, yeah, Monday, wait, Sunday the 20th, Sunday the 20th, okay, 8 a.m. Sunday the 20th from Virginia Beach in a lot of those southeastern Virginia regions, and then also the eastern regions of North Carolina are going to be receiving those oranges and reds by this point, so expect to wake up Sunday morning to heavy rainfall for these regions, moderate to heavy rainfall, and it's not just going to be scattered and off and on. This is going to be consistent rainfall for multiple hours, especially you can see how wide the area of yellow is there. We're going to be dealing with moderate to heavy snowfall for multiple hours for a lot of regions. Baltimore and D.C. also and Philadelphia getting moderate rainfall by this point, so... This is not to be played around with. Now the Delmarva is getting the heaviest amounts of precipitation there by time we're at 12 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, so Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, areas like that. We're getting those oranges and yellow, so moderate to heavy rainfall throughout. But all of eastern Pennsylvania is also getting a lot of those yellows and probably New York City and New Jersey by this point as well. You can see that by 5 p.m. on Sunday, it goes a lot more coastal. Delaware, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, New York, uh, Connecticut, and even up through Boston, we're getting the heaviest of the precipitation by this point, <clears throat> and probably even Cape Cod, Nantucket, and uh, Martha's Vineyard alike. And by 8 p.m. on Sunday, same story, kind of, not much to talk about on this frame. Uh, it kind of looks similar to the last one. I don't think we passed too much time. Now, we went a little more low resolution here. We had to downgrade models so that we could get further out into the model run. But by 5 a.m. Sunday night, you can see Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, or on Monday morning. So Sunday night, Monday morning time frame. We have some showers there for Boston up through coastal New Hampshire and coastal Maine, but nothing like we had in our last nor'easter. Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and Cape Cod are really going to be the only areas in New England that are heavily affected by this one, which is good news because you guys have been, um, <laughs> you haven't even had time to recover from what we just had there. Now let's talk about your wind. Looking at 3 a.m. tonight, you can see that we have in those greens, we have 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts, or sorry, 20 to 30 knot wind gusts. In the oranges, we have 30 to 40 knot wind gusts. And in the red, we have 40 to 50 knot wind gusts. In the pink, 50 to 60 knot wind gusts. And then in the purple color, we have 60 to 70 knot wind gusts. Now, I do think that this model is overdoing it a little bit, uh, but not by too much. I think that uh, we'll likely be seeing 50 knot wind gusts in a lot of regions, but I don't know about 60 plus. So you can see it's moving on shore to right uh, Apalosha Cola. Did I say that right? <laughs> I think I just butchered that, but yeah. that's a. Uh, I've definitely heard that city, but we'll just say <laughs> Tallahassee, we're seeing the red, so 40 to 50 knot winds. Uh, uh, Mobile, we're getting 30 to 40 knot winds by this point. Let's move on to 2 p.m. and you can see it's kind of shifted to where a lot of the east coast of Georgia is getting the brunt of it, but also some areas in the panhandle of Florida are still getting the oranges and reds, but Savannah by this point, you're getting 40 to 50 knot winds, as well as Jacksonville and maybe Daytona, you're probably getting 30 to 40 knot winds by this point. Let's move on another one to 8 p.m. tomorrow. And you can see for the most part, Charleston and Savannah are in the bullseye here for the wind. Not that it's a good thing, but uh, Savannah up through Charleston, up into Georgetown. We're receiving 40 to 50 knot winds. And even Charleston maybe even getting 50 to 60 knot winds by this point. So very intense winds with this one as well. This is why I said it would probably feel like a major nor'easter more than a tropical system. Uh, there's not, you know, it's once it goes post tropical, it's going to feel a lot like a nor'easter, most likely a strong, strong, strong nor'easter. So as we move on to 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, you can see that we have for Holy Ridge up through Jacksonville, North Carolina into Beaufort, North Carolina, and also Moorhead City and a lot of the southern uh, the southern outer banks there as well. We have 40 to 60 knot winds. In those reds, we have the 40 to 50 knot winds. And then in the pinks there, we have 50 to 60 knot winds. That's for Beaufort, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville, North Carolina. So that's going to be very intense winds for you guys there. As we move on to 10 a.m. on Sunday, you can see a lot of the northern outer banks getting those reds and pinks by this point. Elizabeth City, you're probably sitting at about 20 to 30 knot winds. And then Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk, Portsmouth. That, those areas there, you're getting 30 to 40 knot winds. And maybe the uh, ocean front, if you live there, you would know what that is. The ocean front there, you're probably getting 40 to 50 knot winds by this point. Knots Island as well, getting 30 to 40 knot winds. Let's move on to 6 p.m. on Sunday. And you can see we're getting some of those reds and pinks showing up for Delaware, Maryland, and even New Jersey, the southern Jersey shore. We're getting 40 
the 50 knot winds in the reds, and then again, 50 to 60 knot winds in those pinks that are almost trying to come on shore. I do think this model is, again, kind of overdoing it, but not by too much. Here by 5 a.m. on Monday, you can see that Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Cape Cod, the, the shores of Rhode Island, and then the very eastern regions of the eastern shore. You can see we're anywhere from the orange colors to the red color. So in the oranges, 30 to 40 knot winds. And then in the reds, we're at 40 to 50 knot winds for Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard there. So still intense winds. And then here by 5 p.m. on Monday, you can see the winds do stay well offshore of Maine, New Hampshire, and most of Massachusetts. So I just wanted to show this frame just to show that there is some good news for you guys up there that were just heavily affected by our nor'easter. Well, our winds are pretty much done uh, as far as this storm. Now, in, in the next 24 hours, here's NOAA's forecast for your maximum wind gusts. You can see they have, in those gold colors, anywhere from 40 to five, 45 to 60 uh, mile per hour wind gusts. And you can see that's right there in the area I was signaling. And you can see onshore, we're only looking at 45 to 50 mile per hour winds. But right along the coast, it might be more like 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. Also, here's your total rainfall. In the southeast for this one, they're kind of downplaying the precipitation in the northeast, I think, but it's possible that this verifies. Uh, in our green colors and blue colors, that's where we're pretty much under an inch. In the pinks and purples, we're at one inch to two inch, and then in those reds, we're at two inches to four inches. And then right there in the panhandle of Florida, there is some areas that look to receive some of the yellows, which is four inches plus. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you found this video to be informative about our post-tropical storm here that's going to feel a lot like a nor'easter. You've probably heard about it, and that's probably why you're here, uh, and I'm, I hope that this was informative once again. Be sure to share this with your friends and family that will be affected by this storm if you think they'll find this forecast interesting or if you think they need to know this information, whether that be social media or private messaging them. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.